Hey guys, this is going to be the end of the summer 2019 plant tour inside of my plant room here that I have in my home. Now I'm going to show you plants that I'm struggling with, plants that are newer to me, plants that are developing and being established a lot better, and also ones that I am currently trying to grow and propagate. So let's get started. I will start first, now that's my new shelving that I got this last month, the month of September. I'm gonna start right here on my cart table. A lot of these plants you have already seen, but a lot of my plants also have grown quite a bit since I have had them. Starting off, I have my Monstera Adansonii, and she is getting way bigger right next to it. And I plan, by the way, totally trailing, I plan on getting new shelves for all of these plants, but a lot of the time the shelves that I get are close to $100, and that's not to say that I'm bragging, but the ones that I like and the ones that are heavy duty and that I prefer are off Amazon. And so all of these in the future will have shelves. So this is just on a made up covered cart table right now. All of you know my beautiful, I just watered him, my beautiful Burl Marks. Now he's got a little bit of dings here and there. He has grown very large for me. I have had twice now that I am sending, I send some cuttings to my friend Pam. <laughs> And I have also propagated him again for Davi, and her channel is called Hey It's Davi. I know a lot of you also are friends with her here on YouTube. So that is my Burl Marks. He's getting taller, bigger. He has two huge new leaves coming up. He's always giving me new leaves. I love him. He's one of my favorites. Then let's see down here let me see if you guys can see that you've seen him many times this is my jungle boogie he is getting large i had to transfer him from a three inch pot now to a four inch beautiful white pot and he's giving me a new leaf right there so he's getting bigger stronger and he's also developing into more of a adolescent more you know um not so baby like but <laughs> more of like a 12 or 13 year old now so Oh, let's, I'm going to take you guys over here. Sorry about the shaking. Here I have my Hoya pubicalyx. Some drama happened with him. I am so sad. He had two very, very long tendrils on him, if you want to call them that, or vines, whatever you want to call it. But what had happened, I'm going to get down. What had happened with him is that when I was putting in the new shelving, one of these little guys, I swear he like reaches out and grabs you <laughs> when you don't know it. Like, since I can't see very well, I don't know that he's doing that. Like it reaches out to you like this. <laughs> and I got caught on one of them because you will see he has these little, if my camera will focus. He has like these little things that come off of him. As you see, something is on my finger. That's so gross. Looks like one of my bird feathers. <laughs> um, as you can see, he has these little spiky things that come off. And if you have a Hoya, you'll know. They have like these little things that like reach out and like cling to your clothes. And it could be like a new leaf growing or whatever. Sorry, my, you can hear my son. He fell off the ledge of a window and it bent one of these long cords that was a lot more fuller than this one, which came off and I'm gonna see if I can propagate it and you'll see that later on in this video. But he was growing like crazy and I let these guys get a little bit of direct sun during the evening time in very bright indirect light. So that is my Hoya pubicalyx. Right next to this guy, I have my Hoya obovata. Love this guy, he has grown like crazy when i first got him he didn't have this long vine on him he's given me so oops sorry you guys that's my son he's having an episode a little bit right now but he had none of these leaves on him he's what is that on my fingertip oh that's a piece of tape <laughs> 
and as I have spilt soil. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so when I got my Hoya obovata, I I think I mentioned this already. I did not have all these leaves. I mean, you can see one growing right there. These two guys, he's giving me these. All of these guys right here. I mean, it's crazy how fast this guy is growing. I love him. I love his round discs that he's giving me. I just watered him. I let them dry out completely before I water them, just like you would a cactus or succulent. And I let them dry out for a couple days until their pot feels super light. And then I will stick them in water and I will bottom water them. So there's that guy. And then we have my ring of fire, which I am kind of sad about because I did not realize he was getting dried out and he became super wilted. So I'm hoping he'll bounce back pretty quickly here. This is my philodendron ring of fire and he is giving me a fourth new leaf right here so beautiful variegation yellow orangey green he's gorgeous then right next to that one i have got my gorgeous red emerald he's gotten so big he's gotten huge He's grown a ton. He's so beautiful. I mean, you could tell from when I first got him, he had only a couple leaves down there. He was dying. And then he just started giving me all kinds of new leaves. So pretty. And then he's giving me two huge ones right there and right there. So that is my red emerald. Then on the back side of this table, I have my philodendron royal queen brand new leaf right here do you guys see the holes in that leaf so i was concerned at first that i had some bugs the last thing i did to this plant was water it with a little tiny bit of hydrogen peroxide now i don't do a soil rinse with these guys where it's one part water one part hydrogen peroxide because you are ridding the whole soil of good bacteria along with the bad now I'm not saying that's the wrong thing to do personally I would not do that to plants that's just my own opinion and it's just my opinion <laughs> nobody else's and I get it like if it the plant is struggling with fungus gnats but if you don't have them or you don't see them I wouldn't worry about it that good bacteria is what's going to help your plant and the nutrition and everything to get to that plant. So when I did put hydrogen peroxide to rinse the soil out, um, to clean out after all the fertilizers and everything, the salts and stuff, that's what happened to my leaf. There's a, whole, there's a couple holes in them and I am convinced it's because of the hydrogen peroxide. I could be wrong, don't quote me, I've been doing a lot of research on it, but just my own opinion. So that is my royal queen, philodendron. I know that you can't see it, but she's got like blood red vines on her. She is gorgeous. I love this plant. That actually has grown out of the cutting area that I did for Pam, so I was really happy to see some more growth. Then I have this wonky thing, you guys never have seen him. I, this was a cutting from a friend. This is Deffenbachia, <laughs> my mug, ghetto setup. But he is so wonky and funny looking. I love him. He was a cutting and he, I'm gonna spin around here. He did not look like he was gonna make it for me. And I had to cut off all of his leaves. I propagated him. He finally sprouted these cool gnarly looking roots and now all of these leaves that you see are brand new I don't know what's wrong with this guy. He's kind of funny looking Like it's been sunburnt or something But he's given me three leaves. Well two leaves and three a third one on the way. So I've got that Daffenbachia. I don't know the name of it, but if you do you can Leave it in the comments down below my wandering dude my trended scantia trend 
love that new name that I can call it now instead of that horrible name that everyone calls it too. But he has grown a ton. Took some cuttings from him and propagated them, made another plant. Love this guy. I am so happy with him. But I kind of rescued him from the store. He was super wilted. He looked like he was dying. And then I brought him home, put him underneath the grow light. And he's doing fantastic. So right behind us, I'm going to ask for some, oh, my, all my paint stuff. I'm going to ask for some uh, um, advice with this guy. This is my Tenante lubber something, lubber or whatever. It's called the never, never plant, basically. He has not grown for me. He's given me maybe two new leaves. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, he has a little bit of crispifying on the tips right there, if you can see it. I don't know what to do with him. He hasn't grown at all. So I don't know. I don't know if it's the soil. I don't know if it's the lighting. I don't know. But if you have any tips or tricks, please let me know. Right above him is my peace lily. I love peace lilies, you guys. You know that. Then right here below, I don't know what kind of... Um, prayer plant this is it's part of the Miranda family I have had nothing but trouble with this guy crispifying tips I don't care I've tried everything different lighting different humidity different soil I've had him for quite a while and I really love him he just gave me a white flower that I just cut off because it was dying and he was in bloom for like two months it was gorgeous my my um my husband was like that looks like a really cool white star with a yellow center. And I was like, yeah, that is a really, I didn't know he was gonna bloom for me, but he did. But now I am, I've cut him down so much, but now he is just, he's always has crispiness on him. Above that is my lemon lime prayer plant, Marante, Marante. And then behind, right below that is, <laughs> Davi, you're gonna kill me. Um, this begonia <laughs> these two guys are doing well he's have to i don't know how to take care of these things he's got some really crispy leaves he's living and this is the healthiest leaf i have on him i think he's finally taking root and getting used to where he's at but i don't think he likes me there is my dotty calathea i love him and it's a tiny, tiny, tiny little plug that I got from the plant farm. In my terrarium, I have my, excuse me, that is a Anthurium, like Facino's giant. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Obviously, he's not, <laughs> he's not a giant and he is quite small still right now, but he was only $9, so I got him. This is my Maui Queen also alongside of him. When I got him, he had all of that crispifying. The two new leaves that are coming in have no crispies. So I'm pretty stoked about that just because I'm like able to provide him with the amount of humidity that he needs. I just think it's too hot in this room for some of these plants and that's why they are turning a little bit brown just because it's like heat stress, I believe. And then I have my peacock prayer plant. Doesn't grow fast, not getting any taller, but he is getting bushier because he's gotten a lot of new leaves down at the bottom. There is one of my divas. She's always giving me brown tips. Like I said, I am not perfect whatsoever. Some calatheas are way easier for me than others. And I am noticing that the fuzzy leafed Calatheas, Calatheas, Calatheas um, don't like me at all. I don't know if it's a baby plant. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know, but they do not like me. Davi, there's another plant you got me. A red prayer plant doing beautiful, finally taking root. And this is a prime example of me not being able to take care of fuzzy leafed Calatheas. Like he's starting to turn brown. I don't know what's going on. I'm about to give up on this guy. 
Some of his leaves are gorgeous, some of them are not. I don't know. Ugh. Get old. Here is one of my favorite Calatheas ever, my Calathea fasciata, also known as the rotundifolia. He has given me leaves right and left. He has got so many leaves underneath over here. He is getting huge. No crispy tips, I love him. My orbifolia, I've had this guy, I've had two of them and I, there's actually two in this pot. I've had this guy for a long time now, since the beginning of this year basically. And he's finally putting out right and left new leaves for me and I love him. He's getting bigger. His leaves are not crispy on the ends anymore. There are some in there that are, but he is doing fantastic. I love, 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 love him. There is one of my new ones, my Calathea Vitata, also known as the White Star. Love that one so far. I've only had him for a day, so cross your fingers. He doesn't suffer from any of the crispy tips. There is my Beauty Star right next there. I've never struggled with that one. And I also have this guy that has given me brown tips. It hasn't grown any at all since I've had him. So I don't know, I don't know. There are some that I could do without and some that I would keep, to be honest. Ugh. Okay, backing up. Right next to my humidifier, I have, oh, there my, there's my finger for you. I have some cuttings and that I'm propagating. Above here, you will see Dobby, this thing has gotten huge. You gave this to me back. It's been longer than a few months, but you gave me this guy. He is finally taking off. Love my Neon Pothos. Right above there is my Marble Queen. Love her. I have her trailing everywhere, as you can tell. There is my Green Prayer Plant. Part of him came out. So now he is struggling and the other side of him has a little bit of yellowing going on. Yes, I know my grow light is on you guys. And I know a lot of you complained last time about what it looked like. So I'm going to turn this off so that you guys can see it. There is the Canna Lily that I'm going to keep inside with myself. The gal I bought her from off Etsy said that they make great houseplants. They just don't get as tall as other plants would outside in the sun. But due to Washington weather, I am not gonna keep this plant outside in the winter. So that thing really took off as soon as I planted it up. There is the Gloriosum I am giving gifting to Myra. Now if you can see, that leaf is brand new, right there. And then right after that leaf came in, I hope you can see that. A brand new one started right after it. Here is my new Melanocrysum. Now it came with a little bit of a war wound. That was not due to me. Just because, I mean, growers can't promise you that there's not gonna be any marks in your plants because if they're growing them outside, chances are there's probably gonna be some sort of bug damage. But I don't mind, he does not have bugs. He gave me this brand new leaf but that was on him already. I don't know if anybody else has noticed when plants have trauma done to them, as in like being cut off the plant and they're giving birth to new plants or new leaves, he came in damaged. So I wasn't expecting a perfect leaf at all. He just came out with that one. And I'm hoping everything after this, any growth, will be in fantastic shape. And then we will start from there. There is my sense of area, moonshine. Love him. Here is my Soderoy philodendron, brand new guy. He just gave me a brand new leaf. Love, love, love. Some propagations from my Silver Ann Pothos or Skindapsis, and then my Silver Ann. Did I already say that? Silver Ann and then my Silver Splash? I don't know. And then behind there is my Serpents with his hairy stem. <laughs> he has gotten um, w uh, better established, I guess, with our weather here and the humidity in this room. And then right next to that, Pam, I have the Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. 
I believe. <laughs> so I have that on my grow table. Coming over, I have, I think this thing is a, is that a Pictus Exotica skin dapsis? I don't know. I know there's a ton that look the same because if you guys saw on Instagram, Gabriella Plants, they showed the difference between the Silver Anne, the Silver Splash, the Silver Pothos, like all of those. You'll know what I'm talking about because you've probably seen it. I don't know what to call this one then. <laughs> all I know is that I love it and she is gorgeous and she's gotten so long and so full since I've gotten her. Next to her, hanging up on the pole, I have my green heart philodendron, also known as the green cordatum. Above that, next to my marble queen, I have the luscious lady locks, um, philodendron micans. Next to my philodendron micans, I have my lemon lime cordatum. And then right next to that, I have my Silver Splash Exotica, and his tendrils are going nuts. See so you, I hope I can do this without messing around. Here is the cuttings I have showed you before, my propagation of my wandering dude. He's just green, beautiful, cream, and green. I love that. I have him up at the top and then behind there I have my Celta Pecona. That is my Celta Pecona and Monstera and it is also coming out with a new leaf if you can see that. I can't get past this table right next to me so that's why I'm at a weird angle. There we go. Below here I've got my Moonlight Philodendron. He is one of my favorites. I love him. He's getting huge. He's giving me some more leaves. I love him. You've seen him lots, loads of times, I should say. And then there is my Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. Behind there, I have my beautiful, 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 sorry about the lights, guys, Philodendron Painted Lady. I love her. She has given me nothing but love and leaves. Leaves galore, I should say. <laughs> like, I've gotten like probably seven leaves since she has come to me about three months ago. Doing great, and she is a very fast grower. Below there, I usually have in this grow light area. Uh, I need to turn this off too. Hold on. Oops. I'm lowering it. Not mean to do that. One, two, three. In this area, I have the Syngonium Confetti and the Syngonium Pink, <laughs> or Strawberries and Cream, or Pink Illusion. I don't know. I think that's a Pink Illusion. The one that you saw me potting up that I had no idea about, it was called the Maria, and that was not true from Garden Goods. So that is the one back there. I have it underneath a grow light because it doesn't get much sunlight or direct sun down or indirect sunlight down here. Next to this right here in this spot, it's dirty. I usually keep my watermelon peperomia, which I will show you in later videos. And then down there, I just have some knickknacks stuff and then climbing pool. And then over here, I'm gonna take you over there. And then hanging up, I know you guys are gonna get backlight. Yes, I have those nasty yellow tapes for any kind of fungus gnat or bug. I have my beautiful Brazil. <laughs> ah, that could go bad. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yes, my big bushy 
glorious Brazil. <laughs> I love her. I love her. I love her. I love her for the longest time. It did not grow, and now it's growing like a weed, and I love it. Deet, deet, deet. Right across from there is my Cebu Blue Philodendron or Pothos, whatever you choose to call that. So it's gotten really long, Davi. I love it. And then right in this corner, I have got, let's see if we can do this, my Congo Rojo. Now, for some of you, do you remember the people who have been with me the longest? I got one of these, whoop, almost dropped the camera. I got one of these back in March. This was the plant that was carrying either the root aphids or I believe it might have been white flies on or in the soil. And this plant got destroyed. This is where I noticed the infestation starting. So after that, I ended up losing my Congo Rojo. Rojo. And I just recently got this guy last month. I haven't actually showed you guys him on film, but this was one of my newer plants yesterday or last month that I got from a nearby nursery called Watson's. So she's beautiful. She's giving me that brand new leaf right there. And she's gorgeous. Raw right over there is <laughs> that looks just wrong. <laughs> I am sorry, but that looks wrong right there. This is my horsehead philodendron. And my husband, I am sorry if this is TMI, calls this the penis plant. And you can see why. So I'm sorry for all of those who are like, oh, I can't believe she just said penis. <laughs> yes, I said penis. But this is what my husband calls it. And it's really cool because when this le when I first got this plant, it was tiny, tiny. None, oh, that's in the way. None of the leaves looked like the original plant did, but as it has matured, you will see the transformation of this plant. See, it barely has any of the horse head look right there. This one, sorry about all the bamboo sticks, guys. I have all of them being supported with other plants. You can't really see it. But it doesn't have any of those like horse head looks. So the taller the plant has gotten, or the more mature, whoop, you'll see that he is getting larger and more defined. So, and then right under there, I've got my golden dragon right there. And then the other leaf is still wonky and he is chilling right here, this leaf. I'm so sorry about the shaking, you guys. This is horrible. Let me see if I can do this. I don't think I'm gonna be able to. This leaf back here, can you see that? Has got a ton of gold back on him. I think that's so cool. He was pure green when I first got him and he's not dying. So the golden part is really starting to come through. And if you remember me saying that it depends on what kind of soil you have him in, how he's going to respond and turn golden. And I think it's weird because that guy is turning golden and this guy has no gold on him. It's weird. And I think these guys are actually slow growers too. For I guess for me, I don't know, for anybody else. So uh, we're getting there guys. I do not like this Fetonia. <laughs> this Fetonia, and it looks like he actually needs, I just watered him too. I got him from Hertz Garden on Amazon. He has not put out any new growth at all. And he has not grown. I have had him for quite a while, since the beginning of March. You guys, he's given me nothing, 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 nothing. I've had him under a grow light. I have had him in bright indirect light. I've had him in direct light. <laughs> he's doing nothing. He's not dead. He just doesn't do anything for me. So I don't know, I'm thinking about getting rid of him. I've been doing that a lot lately. Side note, completely. I'm starting, I got rid of some plants last, this last week to my sister 
just some plants that I was not in love with anymore. So I actually got rid of some of my plants. That there is my neon syngonium. Now there were my neon and my coral that I had placed together in one pot. And then they weren't doing so hot, so I separated them again. And the coral is out in the living room and I brought my neon in here under this grow light and it seems to be doing better. So they don't grow very fast for me. I don't know why, I don't know. There next to him, <laughs> that is some sort of pilea. I cannot remember the name, you guys. But he is in the pilea family. He looks like lizard skin and I love it. Something bronzed, bronzed pilea or something. And then over there, Davi, I have your white butterfly. A lot of them came off and died um, after shipping. And then once I potted him up, he perked back up because he was pretty wilted. So I have him there. And then my peperom, no, not peperomia. Yes, peperomia orba. So my green peperomia orba. And I believe I showed you everything I have in this room. And then I'm going to back up and just show you my shelving. One last time. I love it. I got him off of Amazon. This was $89 for this shelf. I love it. I would not take it back. It is super sturdy. A lot sturdier than that bamboo one that I got last month, the month of July. Yeah, July I got that bamboo one that I keep in my living room. And that one is not very sturdy whatsoever. But this guy is amazing. And I'll show you something else that he came with. This, it's plastic, these little plastic things. So putting plants and everything is perfect because you know how we have, I didn't like the metal shelving at first because I was like the grates, it makes it like so like wobbly with the pots on there. And my pots do not do that because of that plastic that you can set down on the shelves. I love it. And each one of these shelves holds 100, 100 pounds. So perfect for plants. But yeah, that is my plant room tour. And I just wanted to update you guys on everything. If you have any questions, please let me know. And I'll be signing out. God bless. Bye.